All right, this is AP, AB, and BC calculus. We are doing unit six, section one, which is exploring accumulations of change. So let's jump right in. So given a rate of change graph, the accumulation of the change is the area under the curve. So what we mean by under the curve here is uh, the area between the curve and the x-axis. So for example, here's an acceleration graph. Uh, remember that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. That is that A of t is the prime of t. So the blue area here, this rectangle that you can see, right, uh, which is 12 because this is three units in one direction and four units in the other, right, is equivalent to the accumulation of change from v of 0 to v of 3. That is, v of 3 minus v of 0 is 12 meters per second because, uh, and to, right here you'll see the explanation for how we get these units, right? The units are meters per second because we are multiplying the seconds on the x-axis by the meters per second squared on the y-axis, uh, hence meters per second, right? So the rate of change, which is the y value on this graph, is uh, if the rate of change, the y value on this graph, is negative, then the accumulation change is uh, over that interval is negative. So area below the x-axis gives you a negative, meaning a net loss of the quantity. An area above the x-axis, right, would mean a positive y value for the rate of change, and that would mean area that's positive, meaning a net gain of the quantity. So we're going to walk through a couple of examples uh, using this graph and a couple using another graph as well. So. Uh, in example one, a particle moves along the x-axis such that its acceleration, a of t, is given by this graph. Uh, given that v of 2 is 5 meters per second, what's the value of v of 7? Okay, so let's go ahead and walk through this. So we're talking about this window from 2, right? So it's 2 to 7, right? So there's a couple different ways to do this. Um, I'm going to argue that I could find this area, right? I could find this area from uh, t equals 2 to t equals 7 in two different ways. I could either treat it as a rectangle that is one unit by four units and then a triangle that is separate, right? So there's the blue area, right? So I could do a rectangle plus a triangle, right? This is one by four and this base is three to seven, which is four units and it's four units high, right? So or I could treat it as a trapezoid, either of those would be fine. So if you did it this way, you'd get that the area of the box is a four, right, one by four, plus the area of the triangle is one half base times height, which is gonna be a half of a 16 or an eight, right? So essentially what I'm getting is that the accumulation in this window is 12, meaning V of seven minus V of two should be a 12. Well, we know what V of two is, it's a five, right? So 12 meters per second for the record, right? So V of 7 minus 5 meters per second is apparently 12 meters per second. So V of 7 must be 17 meters per second. Now, the other way to do that is to treat this as a trapezoid. I promise you're going to get the same area or same area if you did it this way. Uh, it would have a base of 5, right, because it would be 2 to 7, and the other base would be a 1. So the area of this thing would be 1 half the height times the sum of the bases, which sure enough is a one half of a 24, which still gives you that same 12. So whichever way you chose to do it. All right, let's try a P1. A particle moves along the x-axis such that its acceleration is given by this graph. We're now told what V of seven is, and we're asked about V at zero, right? So we know V of seven, we want V of zero. Well, I can find this area, right, in a couple different ways, right? I'm going to argue probably the easiest way to find this area. We've already established that this is a 12, right? This is three units by four units. So this is a 12. We've also already established that this triangle was one half four times four, which is definitely an eight. So the entire area, right? The net change is 20 meters per second. So V of seven minus V of zero is 20 meters per second. We know V of seven is 30 meters per second minus V of zero, which is 20 meters per second. To solve for V of zero, I would subtract the 30. I get negative V of zero equals negative 10 meters per second. So V of zero must be 10 meters per second. All right, let's do an E2. So for times from zero to 11 seconds, a particle moves along the x-axis such that its velocity v of t measured in feet per second is given by the graph below. So this is v of t in feet per second and the time in seconds, right, if that helps at all. Uh, given that the initial position of the particle was negative eight feet, what is the final position? Okay, so 
here's the idea. Initial position of the particle means that x of 0 was negative 8. And the final position means we want to know what is x of 11, right? Well, we can find the net change of this particle, because remember, this is the rate of change of the position. So if I find this area, right, if I find the entire area of all these shapes, uh, that'll give me my net change, right? So essentially, x of 11 minus x of 0 is going to be whatever this total area is of all these values. Well, remember that anything below the axis is negative. So this is going to be a negative area, and this is going to be a negative area, right? And anything above the x-axis is positive. So I'm going to go ahead and find, uh, so, so this is going to be the total area from t equals 0 to t equals 11. So I need to find that total area, and then I'll be able to solve for the missing quantity, which is x of 11. So let's go ahead and find these values. So this is a 1 half the height times the base, but it's negative because it's below the axis. One way to think about that is to pretend the height is negative. Either way, I get that this first area is a negative 1 half, right? Um, we'll deal with this chunk next after I do this value. So this is a triangle with a base of 1, 2, 3, 4 units and a height of negative 2. So 1 half uh, the base times the height. And again, the easiest way to make that come out negative is to just treat the height as a negative 2, right? Okay, so those are negative values. These are above the x-axis, so there's a couple ways to do this. This one you could do as a trapezoid, right, with a height of 2. Uh, or you could do it as two different triangles and a rectangle. I don't really care, right? It's entirely up to you. So you could do it as a triangle and a rectangle and another triangle. You could do it as a trapezoid. It doesn't matter. And then you're going to do this guy also as a triangle. So this one's easy because it's actually the exact same triangle as this, just above the x-axis. So I'm just going ahead and make that a plus 1 half, right? That's a 1 half times a 1 times a 1. For this one, uh, this is a 1 unit by 2 unit rectangle, so that's just a 2, right? This is 2 by 2, right? And it's 1 half of a 2 by 2. So 1 half of a 2 by 2 triangle would be 2. This is also a 2. So it seems to me uh, that this is a 6. So when I clean up all this stuff, it, it looks like the area comes out to be the negative 1 half and the positive 1 half will cancel, right? This is a plus 6 and a minus 4 because the 2s cancel. So I end up getting 2. Once I know that, I know that x of 11 minus the negative 8 that I started with, so minus a negative 8, equals 2. So that's x of 11 plus 8 equals 2. My initial starting position should be a negative 6. So the answer, or I'm sorry, not starting position, my final position rather, final position is at negative 6 meters. Right, because that's my x of 11 is negative 6 meters. Was it meters? Might have been feet. Feet! Take it back. Feet. Always check your units. All right, last one. Okay, so from negative 4 to 6, which is the entire graph we have, a particle moves along the x-axis such that its velocity b of t measured in meters per second. So I'm going to go ahead and put a meters per second up here, and we'll put seconds on the x-axis, uh, is given by the graph below. We know what x of 6 is. The question is, what is x of negative 2? Well, so here's negative 2. So what I want you to notice is we're not paying, and here's 6, we're not paying any attention to the stuff over here. It doesn't matter in this problem. So x of 6 minus x of negative 2 should give me whatever area I get when I find this entire thing, right? So x of 6 minus x of negative 2 equals this entire area, right? This window to this window. Okay, so this is a semicircle right, of radius 2. So this is 1 half uh, pi times 2 squared, but it's negative because it's below the axis, so I should get negative 2 pi. So that's this area. This area is a base of 1, uh, so sorry, these go by 2, so uh, 2 and 2, so that's 4, right? So a base of 4 and a height of 2. So this area is 1 half the base times the height, which is just a 4. So it seems to me that this total area is a 4 minus a 2 pi. So now when I solve, right, I, I know x of 6. x of 6 is 10, so 10 minus x of negative 2 equals a 4 minus 2 pi. I'm going to subtract the 10 over, so negative x of negative 2 
is a negative 6 minus 2 pi. And then I divide everybody by a negative, and then I get x of negative 2 is a 6 plus 2 pi. And that's as nice as my answer gets. The last thing I need are units, and in this case it is meters. So there's my x of negative 2. And that's the idea of how you use accumulation of change uh, in a graph. It's going to tie back into something we call the first fundamental theorem of calculus in the next couple units.